Yeah. Did they do any better on the future games or? I mean, they were conference champions. Right. Yeah. They were they were conference champions even before the last game. Do you remember who they owe is Duluth that they played, right? What, the game that Craig was at? Uh, Do you remember? Or either Duluth or Wisconsin. I, I thought it was Wisconsin. The lacrosse team? Yeah. Well, they beat lacrosse like six to one or something. So I don't think that's what it was, but maybe. It was a game they lost. Well, they lost to Duluth. Um, I can't remember if they drew Duluth in Duluth or not, but they lost to Duluth here. Duluth didn't make the playoffs. Oh, they didn't? No. They lost at the playoffs, right? When we were watching. Or no? I don't know. Oh. Duluth did not make the playoffs. Oh. Okay. The playoffs were in July after you left. Um. Yeah, the Rochester team and City were the teams that made the playoffs. Duluth finished third. How does travel works? What do you mean? Like, do you have to keep it on while you're biking or? Does How does what? Or do you have to like, keep the app open on your phone while you're biking? Yeah. I mean, it runs in the background. You don't have to have the like actual window open. It's like a widget. So yeah, it's been I've been 8.9 miles today. How many miles have we done so far? Two, three maybe. Wow. Oh no, it was seven when we left, so almost three, I guess. Okay. So you did like the rest of them during the lunch break? No, I mean, I went to work and then I came home. The GPS gets kind of wigged out in the city sometimes. Um, so even though it's like 0.6 miles to work, so like there and back and lunch, that should be 2.4 miles. But often it gives me like 3.5 miles. It might be a little over 0.6, but even if it's 0.7, then we're 2.8 miles. So. I'm still getting like bonus miles, which is fine with me. Some, sometimes it does, it like subtracts miles. That's less often, I think, but uh, it does happen. Okay. So. How does it work like when you take lunch at work? Do you tell them whether you're going to be like back in an hour or two hours? Or Not usually. Start? I mean, the assumption is you take an hour, but then like. I'll put it on the calendar oh. if I'm going to take a longer lunch. Oh, okay. That way people know not to expect me back. But it's like, you know, the people in the other offices don't know if I'm you know, at my desk or what, so that's to help them out, mostly.
did you do any more uh well what'd you do today i guess that's the uh the real question <laughs> Too bad it's not uh, nice and sunny. <laughs> I think probably a lot of people are at the bars because the twins are playing. So I think that's probably why it was hard to find a parking spot. Yeah. It's the first game of the playoffs. They still play outside, right? Yeah. Yeah. But their likelihood of going like deep into the series is pretty limited certainly not impossible but i mean it's worth my work like spend money on all kinds of sports <laughs> like not even one sport just like all kinds yeah uh, but there is like basketball or they just like look at the chances yeah and then they're like oh okay Maybe I'll just try this out. <laughs> I don't understand the like gambling sensation. People just like even if you win a few times, it's not like a sustainable income. So why would you? Yeah, I mean, the bookies like know what they're doing. I mean, so. thing that seems like it might be useful to do is at like the beginning of the season wow. to like uh to like bet on like a champion or like a division winner or something uh because like there's so many unknowns yeah. that like they're though you know they're less likely to be right than on a single game, you know, because they're going to place the odds right before that game. But, so. the, uh, but the previous like year champion would still have the highest odds. Not necessarily. I mean, there could be a lot of reasons why that's not the case. Uh, I mean, it depends on the sport, partially, but um, you know, the way that it happens in uh, most American sports is. Um, you know whoever is good gets they don't they they pick last in the draft so um you know
there's a, I don't know if you watch Netflix at all, there's a movie about the guy who like travels to the past and that he like makes bets on sport games. Oh, I haven't that. seen that, no. Seems like you'd get found out and like banned. You need some like fake IDs or something. Sorry for that one guy. We showed him like the the book with the quotes. Yeah. That other guy just went and made like mostly on the same team and different like sport bars. Yeah. And then he got caught because it was all the sport bars were owned by the same like mafia. Uh, yeah. And they both like got beat out. Getting the Powerball jacket. That'll be sweet. Getting what? Powerball jacket. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I still feel like even if I want like jackpot, I would still want to work in some capacity. Or would you just want to like retire completely? I mean, it depends on what you mean by work. Like. You know, like my mom retired and then she got a part-time job. Uh, you know, Wendy talks about like opening up like an animal sanctuary or something. Animal sanctuary? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, like a place for like, possibly like, animals that have like out you outlived their usefulness on a farm or something like that and they can just like yeah. is it like animal retirement <laughs> yeah. or like you know like cats that are you know in kill shelters and i don't really understand the need in like opening a new one like it's a lot of work that goes into like opening something like that just like you know, help out one that's like already exists. Yeah. I don't know. Don't you need to be like veterinarian kind of background to Well, I mean you can hire a vet a vet. And also like um it depends on the type of animal and the like where it's located. Yeah. You know, like they don't necessarily need to be sick animals. Did Sarah give you any sort of timeline? Um, she told me I should apply. Oh yeah. Like uh, she told me that she like, oh good, she like, she needs me to like officially apply. Yeah. And kind of like push my position. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I'd say do that, you know, early tomorrow or tonight. Um, actually, no, never mind. Because today was is Friday. Uh, so sometime this weekend. <laughs> but if all people who are applying are like, all the time graduates, I feel like you don't really need to like have that three month course. I feel like What's more important is the technical mindset that you... You don't know who those three people know. Six, six people or seven people? Yeah, I mean, you don't, you don't know who the, the boot campers know. Or like what kind of degrees they have, what their grades were. You don't know any of that stuff. So, uh, you know, one of those boot campers could have like, you know, 40 years of business experience. And then he was like, oh, I want to be a developer now. But is it like, does it make you many advantage over like a person who had support experience, like three years support experience? I mean, I don't know. I'm not the hiring manager. Right. I don't know who the hiring manager is. I don't know anything about Glippy. Other than at one point, it had the highest revenue per employee <laughs> in San Francisco. <laughs> 
I think they closed the San Francisco office. I haven't heard that officially, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did. Okay. They're in Alameda now. Well, I knew that this position was in Alameda, but I didn't know if all the people that used to work in San Francisco got relocated. I thought she said, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I just don't know. I'm not saying they didn't. I'm not saying they did. So, if she said they did, then... I mean, there's a big space in Alameda, so it makes sense. But, yeah. It was super busy today because it's an Australian holiday today. Uh, or actually, I guess it was an Australian holiday. It's an Australian holiday on Monday. But all their, like... It, they'll they'll pick up like people in the u.s the tickets that like the california team doesn't pick up and so all those people that responded today we had to pick them up do you guys so. have like the indian team or just the like australia US? My, my the vcs team has um has sydney uh london and then the two north american offices But Perfecto has an Indian office. That I know. Because uh, Kevin is now the Perfecto support manager and he had to go out to India. And Glyphy is not part of Perfecto. No, Glyphy is Rogue Wave. But not really because they bought Gliffy right before we bought them. So Gliffy never really got like incorporated into Rogue Wave. It's really its own little tiny thing all to its own in some respects. And so what they did is they didn't keep it under Rogue Wave. They gave, at least under support, they gave Gliffy 